Welcome to episode two of Pobblebunks and Kundagungans. For our second episode, we've got something very special for you. We've got all of the members here from Pobblebunks and Kundagungans, the nichest YouTube channel in the world. This weekend, we're here looking for fossorial frogs or frogs that live below the soil and only come up during wet times. I'm gonna introduce you to the boys. Let's go. Classic Gen Y on the phone. This is Ben. Hey, Ben. Hey, guys. Hey, my name's Ben, and I like frogs. Oh, that's good. Ben is actually our uh, frog expert. I try to be. Unlike the rest of us, Ben actually knows things about frogs. Next we have Nero. Hello. You're more a snake guy. Yes, but they're a pain in the ass to find. So we have Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, what's your strength in the team? I'm here. I'm reliable. <laughs> <laughs> I like maps. Yeah, Daniel's the map guy. I don't know what I am. Sorry. I'm good at nothing. <laughs> Episode two. After like a huge amount of rain, the crucifix frog, a toted bonetti, that boy comes out of its uh, burrow, but it covers its whole body in this like hectic mucusy layer to keep it moist in the in the sand. When it comes out, it eats its own skin cocoon to give it like a boost of energy before it goes out. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Rain, rain, rain. And that's the reason that we're going. Game is spot the frog. Yeah, look at this guy. Yeah, look at him. Look at this boy. Look how fat and happy he is. He's having a good time. Everything on I love one eights. They're like my favourite frog. Really? Yeah. I love the little cute sound they make. It's the best. Oh, we definitely see a fair amount of them, but they are cute. Right. So we can hear the um, Crinia parasignifera. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Is that, <laughs> a, is that a really high pitched? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What yeah. is it? Say it again. Beep. Yeah. That sounds exactly Beep. what it sounds like. <laughs> They're just so small. In terms of the call, it's sort of the only thing that you can use to distinguish them against Crinia signifera. Yeah, it's one of the main differences. One of them clicks and one of them beeps. Alright, spread it out. Absolutely tiny. Barely pick it out. Crinia parasignifera. What's a common name? <laughs> Beeping froglet. That's right. There he is. What's going on with your fashion today, John? It's the polka dot look. It's a real thing. Almost stepped on a barking frog. <laughs> what are they? Limnodynasties. Barking frog. It's Barking right. frog. That <laughs> <laughs> could be a uh, spotted marsh frog. It is a spotted marsh frog. So we've got a barking and a spot together. They do look very similar. So what you're saying is that dorsal spine could actually occur in both the species. I've seen barking frogs in South Australia with dorsal spines, although in Queensland they are more common in striped marsh frogs, so I haven't seen any barking frogs. I like how you say like they look very similar when you got one clearly just got one stripe down its back and the other one is like very spotted. Thing. Yeah, but yeah. I think the I think the thing to remember is that like colour morphology and stuff like that is not always a good indicator of determining species in frogs. Yeah. So um, there's so much diversity even just within the species. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the best way to distinguish these from these uh, is their finger digits are different lengths. Yeah. There you go, finger length for Tasmaniensis. Third is bigger than the second, which is bigger than the fourth, which is bigger than the first. Whereas this one, the third is bigger than the first, which is bigger than the second, which is equal to the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> you got that? Yeah. <laughs> Do we think that they're different species? Or yeah. Are we, are we I reckon they're different species. That's yeah, barking. Yeah. And that's um, Tasmaniensis. Awesome. Good job, guys. I'm glad we cleaned that up. Another species. Done and dusted. The uh, eastern metalite frog. 
Mexico or speed for um, the Uber truck is So that's the one that we like, which we got. Then that's the thing that we want, that we don't got. He's awesome, hey. He is definitely a frog. He just jumped on you. He's under your foot. So this is the um, Borrelia rugosa, we think. So just hanging out on a log like that. So there are lots of termites around here. Nice. So there are heaps of termites, and as Ben said, um, that's an awesome sign for us with um, crucifix toads, because that's all they eat. What? No way! Whoa! <laughs> yes! What the heck? That is our target species. That is yes. absolutely amazing. Is that called a holy cross frog? A crucifix toad? We got the frog! Got him? Yeah. What I'm so happy. Decent size! I've seen them nearly the size of tennis balls, hey? And that is such a cool frog. Oh yeah. So you can totally see why they get their name, the Holy Cross Frog. Finally. Definitely not a toad. Some really cool things about these frogs. Number one, they excrete this disgusting mucus from their skin to deter predators. They're coloured in a way that's supposed to deter predators. And they use their toes to lure little insects, so they'll like wiggle their toes. Maybe they might fly. Toes? Mmm, toes. Target species. Been here all night looking for it. It feels really good, hey boys. <laughs>